So next up we have uh, Alice Cecile, who is a um, scientist, and, scientist and a game developer tackling the impossible uh, to talk and educate us about Bevy. Welcome. Hi there. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so I'm Alice. Uh, I'm one of the maintainers of Bevy. And one of the questions that I get quite a bit these days is, Bevy seems really cool. This is really fun. Should I make my next game in it? Is it ready for commercial use? And well, the answer is, I, I mean, maybe you could. And if you have a particularly weird game or thing that is kind of like a game, it's a great choice. But if you, ha if you want to make the next AAA shooter, probably not. So I want to get into, th 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 that's not the end of the talk, so let, 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 let's get into a little bit of the history of Bevy and some of the nuance there about what it, uh, why I think that and, and what Bevy is really good at and what Bevy is honestly really bad at still. So let's, uh, let's get started. So if you've been hanging around either the Rust space or the game development space for long enough, if you, if you were here five years ago, 10 years ago, it's, you'd hear, the, you'd hear these rumors that Rust is, Rust is the perfect language for making video games in. It's, it's fast, it's reliable, it's productive. We have this incredible tooling where you're, you're freed from the hell of C and C++ dependencies and build chains. It, it works across platforms. Maybe we could even get it going on console. You have this like awesome type system. And we were starting to see adoption like within the broader tech industry. You have, you have people like Huawei, like Amazon, like Google, like Microsoft who are say, Rust is a great language. It's really fast. It's really productive. It's really safe. Like this, 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 this rocks. But it's not yet. So why should you, why should you listen to me? Like why, why, why does my opinion matter here? So I, I'm one of the people who maintains Bevy and I spend a lot of my time listening to people. It's, it, it, it's, it's a huge part of my job where I go and I listen to hobbyists, I go and listen to professional developers and I, I, I hear their complaints and I answer their questions and I tell them and I, I work to really hard to understand their needs and understand the limitations. Um, during my time at Bevy, I'm primarily focused on project management, documentation, and the ECS. If you have really complex rendering questions, I'm not the person to talk to, but I can connect you to the right people. Um, I also have uh, qu quite a bit of experience making, uh, making games professionally in Bevy and working on teams being paid real money to make real, real games that are intended to be published. So I, I, I can talk to that side and some of the challenges th that we experienced. Um, the other reason you should listen to me is because honestly, um, I'm too honest. It's, I, I will tell you um, that I will not lie and I will not exaggerate our, our capabilities here. There are many things that are still not ready and still genuinely suck. So it, 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 if I say something is really cool, you can believe me, but, it, it, and, but simultaneously, if I say that something is half-baked, it, it really is half-baked. So, like I was saying, it's, people, were, people have been saying Rust is, Rust is the future of game development for years and years, and you know, maybe, maybe it is, but the future, the future isn't here yet. It's, why is that? So one of the big reasons is the borrow checker. The borrow checker is, doesn't like it when you don't structure your programs well and we don't think through what you want to do. And I, I, I mean, game development is notorious for just kind of just kind of building and stuff and then figuring out requirements later. And, and I mean, part of that is industry practices, which I think could be better, but part of it is also the fundamentally iterative nature of making games, of finding fun, of finding product market fit and, 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 and finding, adding features. Um, similarly, the, the, the compilation times of Rust have historically, and even today, really sucked. And the longer your compile times are, the longer your, the longer your evaluation loops are, and, and, and the harder it is to iterate quickly and to be like, oh, I want to make this quick change, see how, see how it plays, see how it feels. And especially because you can't get reasonable performance builds unless you're c compiling in, in release modes. It, it, like, it's, especially historically, you would be waiting for like minutes between each, each change in your logic. Um, the next problem here is that game engines have a lot of dependencies. Like th there's a lot of things that you want to do in a game engine that you don't really want to like write from scratch in your game engine. And these are the th all of the things that interact with all of the really 
really important OS level um, uh, OS level features like graphics, like audio, like like windowing. It's like, oh yeah, man, I really want to write a windowing library that, that that handles cross-platforming things. Like this is why I like sat down and was like, I'm gonna make a game engine. No, no, no. That's you don't. You 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 don't want to do this. And in C and C plus plus, like there are just established dependencies that are really, really good and really polished that you just pull into every single engine. And Rust historically didn't have that. We're getting there, but it, we're not done. And finally, it's game engines are huge. They are, they are a monumental project that, that is honestly rivaled by, by web browsers. Um, and it's, it's very hard to make a full general purpose game engine without a huge amount of community support or very serious dedicated commercial backing. So that was the case. And a few years ago, Bevy, Bevy came into existence. And pretty much immediately, the Rust community was reaction was, wow, this is really, really cool. And this is fundamentally different than the game engines that came before us. It's We have a a maintainer, Kurt, Kurt Anderson, who seems to really care a lot about the quality and the polish and the and the performance and, and the like needs of professionals in a way that like a lot of the other game engines don't, which were fundamentally written for hobbyists first. And it, the the other thing that, that Bevy really brought to the table is our ECS. So I talked about that a lot in my previous talk, which hopefully should be posted online soon. And it, the the ECS if, um, it, it takes uh, it takes data from the world and it, it it just dispatches it to your system in a really beautiful and elegant way that makes programmers very very happy and if Bevy couldn't have done this Bevy couldn't have been this if the ecosystem hadn't got uh, got us most of the way there it's you know standing on the shoulders of giants it's hex and amethyst were incredible for proving out how ECS and and Rust can be can play together very very well and solve a lot of the core architectural challenges of uh, uh, with the biotracker. Um, when it was it has been instrumental in terms of providing all of the horrible 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 like cross platform um, uh, like providing a nice API over all of the windowing and input. Um, cross-platform challenges. It's, it's not perfect yet, but it's so much better than it used to be. And WGPU came onto the scene just after Bevy was released, and it, it is fantastic. This is, this is a really powerful, really, really flexible, really high-performance um, rendering, like mid-level rendering abstraction that handles all of the horrible intermediate details for us. And, and if, honestly, both Winit and WGPU are foundational to a lot of uh, basically all Rust, like modern Rust game engines and a ton of other like Rust GUI applications and so on. So thank you so much to those teams. And finally, Bevy had some, some clever tricks to get the compiler times, compilation times faster than before. So one of the things that I said was that Bevy has this, uh, ha has this experience, this developer experience that makes, it makes people very happy because that's all, like, you see that? that? That's all that a system is. It's just a function with some parameters. And by analyzing the parameters using the type system, we can say, I want this data. Please, please inject it over here. And it just, you, you just add it to your schedule, and then it just grabs it. There's no, there's, there's no plumbing. There's no fighting the bio checker. You just, there's no, there's no macros. And you just do it. And it's wonderful. A a and. And we have a lot of extensions to that. Again, see my other talk. Um, and the uh, the developer experience and, and, and the reaction there. If you haven't tried it, just spend spend an afternoon and and just mess around. It's really cool. So as Bevy uh, as Bevy kind of took off, uh, was launched, it it exploded in popularity. It's this was, uh, it, it was overnight the most popular, the most exciting Rust game engine. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden we went from Kurt working on this, uh, working on this on, on his own, like locked up in his room for, for two years to, okay, now we have thousands of users. We have hundreds of people trying to contribute all at once. And how do we, how do we scale that and manage that from a organizational perspective? 
And there's been, uh, and in that initial pass, there, were, there was a ton of rapid improvements to rendering, to the ECS, to our um, runtime reflection libraries, to, to our documentation, and to just generally making this a functional, usable piece of software. And Finally, we, we, we've we started to see uh, commercial users already. It's it, They don't care that we say that this is unstable, that this isn't ready for commercial use. They say, no, 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 this is still the right tool, the, the tool that I want to use to build out my next game or build out my next weird piece of software. So that's that's all really great, and, and maybe this is the right decision for them, but is be using Bevy the right decision for your team? I especially, like, if you're a hobbyist team, whatever, like, use whatever makes you happy. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But if, you were, if you're a commercial game developer, or if you're a, if you're a company making something with, like, with digital twins, or with, with augmented reality, or, 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 or uh, uh, yet another computer-aided design software, like, there is real money, there is, t there is years of work riding on that decision of what engine do we use to build our next piece of software. And you, you, when you make that decision, like really think through your specific needs and your specific goals rather than getting caught up in the hype for any engine. And so Bevy has, ha, has some things that are really, really awesome about it. And, and very briefly, I think that the, the top three things are the fact that, it, that's, that it's, it's all ECS and it's beautiful, um, the fact that it's written in Rust, and the fact that it is extremely customizable. Um, but Bevy is also still very incomplete. If you need, if you want first uh, first party UI, if you want, uh, if you want mature asset handling, if you want high performance uh, and like nanite uh, nanite lumen level rendering, Bevy is not the right choice unless you want to build that yourself, which you can, and it's great. And and, and there have been teams who have built out really incredible, incredibly beautiful things, but you know that's that that's time, and time is money, and. It's, it, it, fundamentally, it's, I think that Bevy is a very good choice if your alternative is, I would, uh, it's, I'm about to make a custom game engine, or, 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 or I want to write some very weird piece of software that kind of shares a lot of things in common with, game, uh, with games, like, uh, like computer-aided design or like digital twins. I think it's a fantastic choice. And I also think it's a fantastic choice if you want to write a crazy emergent simulation game. So something like Dwarf Fortress, something like Oxygen Not Included, something like uh, like Minecraft or, or or Factorio. But if you want to write, you know, a two D platformer, or you want to write a AAA shooter or whatever, like just just use something established. If you if you don't need the if you don't need the performance, if you don't want to break the mold in some way, it's not worth taking on that risk. So l l let's talk a little bit more about why Bevy is really, really cool and, and why there's developers who say, I want to write my games in Bevy, even though it's immature and, 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 and who love it. And fundamentally, uh, so the first point is, is it's Rust. It, it's, it's real programming. It's all programming. It's, y you, you have like libraries and .rs files and like .toml's and features and unit testing and 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 doc strings and it, it all just works beautifully and there's no there's no blueprint hell there's no there's no complex dependency management there's no like separate scripting layer that you need to go and manage manage the versions of like it, it all is just programming in Rust. There's no okay. Now I need to figure out how to use this this visual editor. And so, people who people who come to and try game game development for the first time, like a lot of them bounce off. Uh, if they're programmers, they bounce off of things like Godot and things like Unity because they say this isn't how I want to work. This isn't how I want to learn. I'm just writing logic. Why can't I just write code? And Bevy does a really 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 good job of that. I think that we are like if you were looking for a code first game engine and and your primary constraint is I need to write really really complex logic that see the effortless gameplay code and I really want to make my engineers happy, I think that Bevy is honestly the best in the world. And similarly, I think that if you want to do something extremely weird if you're like, oh, I want to go and figure out how to control this with a with, with a drum set. I want to go and uh, go and uh, like integrate 
the metaverse, but like with a, with a surgeon scalpel, or or like I want to go and write my own renderer from scratch and and just have like all of the rest of the stuff it, 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 it still still there and still basically work. Bevy is incredibly good at this. It's everything is very very well modularized, and it's very easy to take and choose the bits that you the bits that you like and the bits that you don't like, and it's very easy to just turn off the things that you don't need and you know, not have the runtime cost, not have the compile time cost, not have the binary size cost. And still have the, all of the rest of the stuff just work in a way that, oh yeah, well let's just, let, 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 let's just fork on wheel and cut out and just delete all the code we don't want doesn't tend to work very well. And it, the, the next point here is our cross-platform story, like a lot of things in Rust, is honestly quite good. It's 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 full disk. Our desktop support is incredible. It's Linux, Windows, Mac. It's I almost never see OS specific bugs, and everything just works across all three major desktop platforms. Um, even e even some of the more obscure Linux distributions, all uh, half a percent of of your of your target audience, but they will be happy because because they'll be like one of the only games that runs natively on them. <laughs> um, uh, our web uh, our web story is great. We hold we hold jams every game jams every six months. It's almost all web games hosted on itch.io, and it's been fantastic. People have been incredibly happy. It, it's it, it, we've been we, it's we've been making really good good strides there. And you can just share your code base between the desktop and web versions. With especially now that WebGPU is coming along, there are very few asterisks there. Um, we have mobile support. It's not very mature. It's something that I, that I personally really want to push forward because I think it's very important to the future of gaming and the end to commercial viability uh, of a game engine, especially uh, given recent events. And uh, we have uh, we have prototypical uh, VR XR support via the wonderful Open XR standard. Thanks, Kronos. Um, and in theory, you could port it to console. Nobody's done it yet because console NDAs. But uh, talking to talking to experts, it seems like this is a thing that could be done. It just requires the right team and the Bevy as a, as an organization and as a as a culture has has a commitment to keeping things open as open as we possibly can there and building uh, building standards that let you do this yourself. Um, and finally, it's it, it's free and open source software in both meanings of that word. There's no royalties. There's no fees. There's no surprise changes to the terms of service. We have MIT and Apache license, and that's what you're going to get today. That's what you're going to get five years from now. That's what you're going to get uh, 200 years from now. Well, maybe not 200 years from now because the copyright will expire. But you know, you know what I mean. So. If that's all great, why aren't why isn't everybody using Bevy today? Because like those are those are really cool features. Like genuinely, like they rock. But not everybody loves ECS. It's it's often it, it, it takes a while to wrap your head around what it means to design gameplay code in in a fully ECS way. It's like okay, I want to go and have a and like implement an RPG style attack, or I want to go and implement a like affection mechanic for my Stardew Valley clone or I want to go like all of these things require different game programming patterns and a different way of thinking than what you might be used to and so it, it, it's it, it takes a while to, to 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 learn how to how to think ECS and there's not great learning resources for it yet um so like I said Bevy is fundamentally young we're, we're only a couple of years old and like you know for a the amount of engineering effort we've thrown at it is tremendous, but the amount we are we are ten twenty percent of the way to a finished product, whatever whatever that means. We're we are so many years uh, we have so many years of development ahead of us in order to get the features that you really need. And as a result, because because we have this, we're, we're taking advantage of this to continue to improve and iterate on the APIs. And there will be breaking changes. There will be breaking changes all of the time, every three months. Um, we have really good migration guides. Users say that the migrations are wonderful and easy and and it's, but there is still pain. You, you still have to go and you have to take a day to upgrade your your 100,000 lines of, lines of code to the next version. You have, still have to go and coordinate with all of your ecosystem dependencies to make sure that they're all up to date. You, it's, the ecosystem is great, they update pretty fast, and they 
I, I, they accept PR, uh, pull requests even if the author is inactive. Like people are really good about accepting pull requests, but saying, "Hey, I updated your, your crate, merge this, and then and then putting publishing a release." But it may still be a couple of weeks out. Um, and then the rest of this is basically word, it's incomplete. It's UI is half baked. This is this is our next major feature, major focus. It's it's we have we have a UI library where you can like you can make buttons. Buttons are cool, and you can draw images, and you can lay out nodes, and and that's it. That 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 that, that that's the that's the complete list of first party widgets. And, and it's like, I mean, you, you you could make you could make a game out of this, but like. If if you want sliders, if you want radio boxes, if you want if you want things that are much more much more complicated or like suited towards like management games, you are going to be in for a lot of pain at the at this moment, and you are almost certainly going to want to use one of the many third party alternatives like Bevy GUI, like Kayak UI, like may, maybe like a one day, an eventual Bevy Dioxys, right? And these are uh, these are high quality, but none of them uh, none of them are fully native. So there's going to be a uh, some some level of interop pain, and fundamentally uh, these are uh, none of them are complete. Like if you have worked in the GUI space within Rust, you will know that nothing is complete. It's eGUI is like basically eGUI is the closest but even still its styling sucks even still it's it's constantly evolving and changing and and it's eGUI and intermediate mode GUI, uh, UI and like that whole model is not right for every project um, similarly we 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 don't have a first party editor like if you if, if your designers are like where's the editor i want to go edit a game it's it doesn't exist yet. It's th there's really cool uh, there's really cool community tools to 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 make simple ones. There's really cool um, uh, Blender plugins that go and uh, that that go and let you add Bevy components to to your Blender scene and use Bevy use Blender as your level editor. Um, there's really cool like third party like inspection and debugging tools. But like if you want an out of the box, oh yeah, where's the editor? The editor doesn't exist. Um, Animation, animation is really important um, for uh, for anything beyond the the, the jam level, and it's it, it, it's it, the our whole animation API is still new. It's still incomplete. We don't have animation blending, and the API isn't polished yet. Um, our audio, uh, our Bevy audio crate, it, it, it frankly isn't very good. It, it, it's like. Yeah, I would use this for a game jam. This is fine. You you you, you can make some beeps and boops and change the volume and whatever. But it's like you're not gonna get beautiful beautiful rich soundscapes. You're not gonna get spatial like spatial audio or nothing. Um, there is a third party crate called Bevy Cura Audio. If you are con if you are considering making serious projects in Bevy today, just use that. Um, our mobile and VR platforms are really cool. They're really promising. They're also really incomplete. Um, Please do your research before being like, I'm going to use Bevy to make a mobile game, or I'm going to use Bevy to make a make a VR game because it may be feasible, especially if your team has expertise. But like, that's not a gamble I would make with my money and my company, until, unless I had done all of my research. And finally, I I if your game is like, it's a 2D platform, we're going to make it and ship it on console, and that's where we're going to make 80% of our sales. Um, don't write your game in Rust, like. Console support is in Rust is probably possible. It will require connections. It will require bargaining. It will require a lot of uh, a moderate amount of technical work. But fundamentally, you need to convince all every single console owner to that to say I will to say Rust is okay on this platform. Your game is okay on this platform, and break new ground. And I think it's possible, and I think it should be done. But I would not do it if this is the focus of your game. Um, Unless, unless you want Steam Deck. Steam Deck is great. Steam Deck supports Rust, and uh, games on Bevy work on Steam Deck flawlessly. I, I really wish uh, that consoles were more open, but that is not the case today. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the, the, oh, come on. It's, let's go to spend a little bit of time talking about the success stories and the companies that have used Bevy successfully. And of course, my uh, my video isn't working. 
Yes. No, no, it, it, it's not going to work. I need, I need, I need her help. Cassiopeia, there we are. There we are. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So the first company I want to talk about is a company called Foresight Spatial Labs. This is our first serious commercial user. And for a game engine, they're not a game. It, 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 it's fun, it's beautiful, but this, this is not a game. This is a piece of industrial software for, uh, it's a computer-aided design soft software with, I think, about 20 employee, 20 full-time paid engineers working on, on this piece of software, and this is mining simulation, uh, mi uh, mining, uh, mining computer CAD. This is blast, uh, blast simulation work. Um, they have some huge clients, and they have had fantastic success working with Bevy. It's they, they've had, uh, they have incredibly accurate physics that runs very, very, very fast in a way that, uh, that their competitors simply can't keep up with. They have, uh, they have perfectly functional, very complex UI, all built in e Bevy eGUI, and they also have really, really impressive rendering. It's, uh, they have some, some beautiful, beautiful um, showcases. It's, I've seen their software. It, it looks fantastic, and they support millions of, uh, like millions of, uh, uh, of entities rendered on screen at the same time. They have dynamic LOD. It's uh, the extent to which they, they have managed to push the performance of Bevy's native rendering is remarkable. It's out of the box, it's not that fast, fast yet, but B Foresight has been really, really generous and really open to collaboration, and a lot of their stuff has been, has been upstreamed. So, for example, the other day they submitted a, a pull request for order-independent uh, transparency out of the box. Um, so, it's, it, it's been, so, this is a good example of the sort of company that should use Bevy. It's, I want to do something in Rust, something that is complex, something that is hard, and something that is weird. And it's kind of like a game, kind of. Uh, and it's like, uh, Cocos was, was saying this in, in their presentation uh, in the workshop, is a lot of things, a lot of things that use game engines, a lot of the money in game engines is not actually in games. And so that market is one where I think Bevy is basically ready. If you want to write a scientific simulation, come talk to me. I'll help you write a scientific simulation in Bevy. So this next one is absolutely stunning. This is uh, this is a project called Tiny Glade, and it's it, it is a one of the most uh, it is a hotly anticipated indie game, and it's 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 a cozy game. And this is written in Bevy, but it's not written entirely in Bevy. It's this is an experienced team that said, okay, Bevy uh, Bevy seems fantastic, but his rendering isn't mature enough for us. So they whipped out the rendering and kept, uh, kept pretty much everything else, our, our input handling, our windowing, I, I believe, and, and especially our ECS, and said, let's, uh, let, let's go make a game in this. And, this. and this is that game. And this is the sort of thing that you can do in, in Rust today, in Bevy today, and it can look astonishing. It can, be, it, it can be fun, it can be rich, you can have all of these really cool dynamic rules, and it's also a testament to the idea of Bevy's, uh, Bevy's modularity. It's it, the fact that they could just say, we're going to go and cleanly whip out Bevy's renderer and put in our own and everything will work just fine is really, really, really cool. So I I if you have particularly unusual rendering needs or, or, or particularly unusual needs in general, go for it. This next one is another another CAD like software. So this is this is Numinal. This is a iOS constructed solid uh, uh, constructive solid geometry um, modeling tool, and it's very very cool. And it this is built exclusively for iOS. This is a mobile application built with Bevy, shipped with Bevy, sold in the App Store today, and it can be done. It's immature, but it, but it can be done. And this is. This is the sort of case where it's like, okay, why does uh, why does it make sense to use Rust and why does it make sense to use Bevy? It's because, yeah, he, he's doing cursed weird math things. Um, I, I, incidentally, I think that there is another very very good use case for why do I use Bevy? A good argument for why should I use Bevy in my mobile games is if you are a studio who's making a ton of similar games, the 
the way that Bevy is reusable, the way that Bevy is modular, it allows you to do your own research and development, build, your, build out your own game templates, build out your own set of libraries, and then continue to reuse and ship those as you, as you launch title after title after title. Um, this is a really compelling argument, and this is something that's much easier to do when you have a real programming language with real, real tools, and it, everything is designed for quality, and designed for reusability, and designed for modularity from the very beginning. And finally, this is a uh, th th this is a very traditional game. This is right. This is this is a small company that's uh, that's been using Bevy. It's a little asteroid mining game and in 3D with 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 classic uh, classic physics and has, it's going to have some some colony builder elements. And this is their game, and they've been they've been wonderfully happy w with it. And you can so it, and w I've talked to them and I said why why did you just use Bevy for this game? And they said because I love it because because Rust is a joy, and because because Bevy is a joy, and so like, if if, if that's what motivates you to do to go and make games, if this is if developer happiness is at a premium, go for it, have fun. So let's talk about what I think the future holds for Bevy, and 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 what I think the next year, the next two years, the next five years are going to look like. Um, Probably, probably about the next two, one or two years for the for this particular set of uh, things. So, the first thing I want to talk about is asset loading and asset processing and <coughs> asset driven workflows. This is really important for commercial teams, and it's often overlooked. One second. <coughs> But it's Cart has spent the last, honestly, probably close to six months now designing, redesigning this from the ground up. Talking after talking to experts, after talking to professional teams, and it's going to rock. Um, next, I think that our rendering is going to continue to get dramatically faster. It's going to get dramatically more beautiful. I think that it, it's there's been really incredible work. Things like things like uh, things like global illumination. Things like uh, things like order independent transparency. Things like um, emissivity, all, all, all of the standard PBR extensions, I think that shaders are going to get e get easier to write. They, and, and rendering is going to become a lot less intimidating. <coughs> <coughs> I think that in the next, in the next two years, and certainly in the next, next year we'll have a solid start, I think our UI solution is going to rock. I think that Using ECS to do UI has a lot of potential and a lot of interest. There's, it's just never been done before. Um, I think that in the next, I, 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 within the next year, we're going to have a basic Bevy editor up and running. And I think, and based on community experiments, I think we're going to have full hot reloading of code and assets. Hot reloading of Rust code. Um, it's moderately cursed, but it, it seems to work quite well. And in terms of development product, developer productivity, it's very, very, very effective. And it's like, yeah, it, it, it's the sort of thing that that nobody's ever done before. And it's like, okay, yeah, I, you you see this when you're working with like Flutter, and, and developers are like, oh man, I can hot reload code. This is such a huge productivity gain. And you can't hot reload C plus plus. You can't hot reload other Rust game engines. So the next thing I think that's going to happen is I think that there's going to be more mature networking solutions. We have three or four networking libraries that are at a passable, passable to, to, to OK state. And these are continuing to, to develop. They're, there's a ton of active community collaboration to kind of split these out into different use cases. So for example, we have Bevy Replicon. Um, and it's, the, there's a lot of expertise there. There's a lot of collaboration, and it's really refreshing to see in a domain that's often shrouded by mysticism. It's it's often said that networking is impossibly hard. Networking is un, it cannot be reused. Networking is unique, and, and and like this is the secret sauce of my game. I can't share it. But there's there's open collaboration. There's open development of it in a way that is rare to see. Um, and. My specialty, the, the ECS, I think that, that the killer ECS feature that we're going to have in the next year or two is going to be entity relations, where you store a, where you, where you can store an entity directly on, on, a, on effectively a component and use this to ensure the validity of your, 
uh, validity of your hierarchies at all time to, to prevent horrible desyncs, to uh, allow a ton of expressivity and correctness and performance by building this in as a first class engine feature. This is something that was pioneered by Sandro Martins in, in Flex, and it is incredible the things that, that he's been able to do with it. And finally, I think that uh, I'm hoping that within the next year we have a proper bevy foundation like, like Godot in order to properly fund developers and, and, and collect money and bring our, bring our work and bring our organization into a, 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 give it the legal standing that it needs to actually function fully. So that's it. That, that, that's all I have for you today. And uh, I, I, if this sounded cool, if you're like, oh man, man, maybe I should make my next game in Bevy. Maybe this, this is cool. Maybe this is correct for me. Or, or if you just have questions about how Bevy works, come, come talk to me. I, uh, it's, I do consulting I, and I'm happy to, to, to do, do, do quick chats for your child to talk about like, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, or you know, it's two years from now, you're watching this talk online, and you're like, man, I wonder how this has changed. Like, come talk to me. I, I'm always going to be happy to. And finally, if you, if you say, uh, I want to go and I want to make my game in Bevy, but like, I really need to hire somebody to do this thing because we need a Bevy rendering expert or we need somebody with like, networking skills or we need, need somebody like a game designer with strong ECS background, like, come talk to me. I love getting people hired. I know a ton of people. Open source is one of the very, very best ways that I've ever found to evaluate people. And so I think I am over a dozen people, people hired wi for, within the Bevy ecosystem. So if you want one of the, uh, one of the next ones, come let me know. Thank you so much.